AMC stock up about five and a half percent at the time of recording this video. If you've seen the last video we put out about a mega bounce, this is following through into the close. Up five and a half percent could lead to a bigger rally coming tomorrow. Now, this is not financial advice. It comes down to the way the markets work, how options work, and overall, AMC looking to catch a little bit of steam off the bottom. So, we're going to get into all of the numbers that you need to know for the day to give you the final numbers and some of these cost to bar rates some of this option activity and the ftds that we are seeing are very bullish and go to show this mega bounce could be pretty big and it might happen all tomorrow it might happen tomorrow and part of the beginning of next week guys so we are going to get into all of this information stay tuned we have a broad market update for you guys as well because things are getting a little bit crazy here on wall street hit that like button subscribe to the channel source your comments questions or concerns down below in the comment section so first things first as we just went over amc stock is up about five and a half percent on the day this is a welcome sign after you have been dying the last couple of weeks this comes because of the vote that happened yesterday which we were very clear about over the last couple of weeks that this vote was going to come in as a yes. There was virtually nothing AMC common stockholders could do. Even if all of us voted yes for this, it still would not be enough to counteract and Terra Capital, as well as the other hedge funds that are a part of this arbitrage trade that essentially were short on AMC long and ape that still have the same voting power as us common shareholders did. So don't be confused on that. Now you have the court date coming April 27th. From now until then, there is going to be a lot of uncertainty. And from now until then, there's going to be push and pull back and forth whether people think this court date is actually going to go the way AMC wants it to or not now some people some analysts are starting to get a little bit more bullish on amc after this conversion was approved saying this is fundamentally the right thing for amc to do which is encouraging on that front but could lead to dilution now <laughs> this is the interesting part since you got this yes vote and the stock hit about $4.30 per share at the low, that's probably the lowest you would hit even if this 1 for 10 reverse stock split, reverse stock split actually happened on a split adjusted basis since most mar market participants think it's going to happen, right? I'm saying over the next couple of days, next couple of weeks, as we get closer to the court date, there will be some doubt as there always is heading into a litigation effort on is this actually going to happen? That will lead to hedging from these hedge funds and institutions that are a part of this arbitrage trade at the very minimum and some shorts potentially covering on those positions heading into the court date April 27th that will give us that overall bullish momentum. After all, you've likely seen the worst of this situation thus far now let's get into what is happening here in the markets today now it's pretty interesting so a group of banks will this is confirmed deposit 30 billion in first republic to stabilize the regional bank you're going to get bank of america wells fargo citigroup and jp morgan that will contribute about 5 billion apiece while goldman sachs and morgan stanley will deposit about two and a half billion the sources said truest pnc u.s bank court corp state street and and bank of new york will deposit about 1 billion each they agree to hold these deposits in first republic for about 120 days now mainly this is a symbolic symbolic kind of uh, statement here right saying if these banks are going to deposit billions and billions of dollars into first republic then you shouldn't worry which is ultimately funny because these banks didn't want to do this until the fdic ensured that all deposits would be made whole if these banks were to go under so i find it almost laughable but this is a, a, a sign at least banks are trying to put out there that things are stable and that's ultimately helping to prop this market up today. As I did report to you guys earlier, though, 
this is really the biggest thing. The European Central Bank decided to raise rates by 25 basis points, largely what Fed Jerome Powell is expected to raise rates by at next week's FOMC meeting on Wednesday. That is going to be March 22nd. Why this is a very good sign is even though people are freaking out about the banking industry in America and in Europe, the fact that they're still raising rates shows that it might not be as bad as people think. And, and that's ultimately what is important because we don't know all the details. The markets go into crises like uh, things are only going to get worse, right? Once you're bullish, you're pretty damn bullish and it's hard to stop it. Once you're bearish, just we think the worst case scenario is going to happen. We thought First Republic, Western Alliance, uh, Bank of Hawaii, all these other banks were going to go bankrupt. And now that it looks like that's not the case, uh, you're getting this bullish snapback, right? So the fact that they did that is a very good thing. It's leading the probabilities for uh, Fed Jerome Powell's uh, next week meeting, like I said, to be that the Fed will give us a 25 basis point rate hike. And those odds are about 76.8%, 23% odds that the Fed does pause raising rates. And, and this is key because, like I said, if the Fed is able to still raise rates 25 basis points, that's going to show maybe the problem's not as bad as we think because ultimately when the Fed pauses, they end up cutting about 90 days later and if the fed were to pause here from what they said just a couple of weeks ago that they're gonna have to raise rates higher than what we thought they would well that would be showing you there is a massive problem taking place in the banking system that's taking place in the economy so believe it or not a 25 basis point rate hike is the best possible outcome if you want a bullish rally to continue in 2023 so far so that is uh, definitely what is helping to push this market up higher today. And like I reported to you guys earlier, you did see weekly jobless claims fall by about 20,000. Continuing jobless claims decreased by about 29,000. But it looks like single family housing starts increase 1.1%, showing maybe more supply will come uh, online. Maybe that will help uh, the inflation pressures in real estate. And import prices fall 0.1% month over month, down 1.1% on a year on year basis. Basis. So pretty good news, uh, relatively speaking, across the board uh, that we are getting today, and that is a positive uh, thing. Now, on top of that, you're going to get the Michigan Consumer Expectation Numbers. Well, it's a survey, but you're going to get these numbers for a lot of different things. Most importantly, tomorrow is going to be the Inflation Expectations, the five-year Inflation Expectations and the one-year Inflation Expectations. That's going to be the main thing that really drives this market tomorrow. If these Inflation Expectations go down, that's going to be a very bullish thing and will help to give you this big bounce in AMC. Now, Let's talk about that. Let, let's let's talk about this bounce. And I think part of it could happen tomorrow. And I think part of it could happen next week as still some of these options will have to be finalized and actually fully hedged for uh, next week. Because usually options that expire on Friday, a lot of those transactions don't actually get settled for the T plus two settlement time. So it could still be two days after tomorrow before a lot of these options will be finalized. Now, when you have options that expire on Friday, like we get tomorrow, and the the stock moves up or moves down for that matter, if you have a lot of option activity that controls a lot of shares, if you get a bullish directional move and you get a lot of options go into the money and a lot of puts go out of the money, you instantly have to hedge for those options if you are a market maker, right? That's your job is to hedge for these trades. So if you get a lot of calls going to the money, that's going to be a very good thing. And you're going to see instantaneous hedging. That's where these mega bounces come in. And that's where you can get, you know, 20% rallies on a Friday. And maybe or maybe not, that's what we get. Who knows? We'll have to see. But the actual numbers we're looking at here on the call side, about 20,000 calls in the money, 720,000 calls out of the money. On the put side, 313,000 puts in the money and 850,000 puts that are out of the money. Remember, 
puts going from in the money to out of the money, that's bullish. That leads to buying pressure from the market makers. Calls, obviously this one's more straightforward and you guys probably all understand that. When calls go from out of the money into the money, that's where you can get a gamma squeeze. That's where you get buying pressure as well. But given the number, the sheer number of options that we have expiring tomorrow, I do expect to see a very dramatic move. After all, today you're up about 6%, seeing 3,000 calls in the money yesterday, now to 20,000 calls in the money today. If you start to get above and stay above $4.50, five dollars per share 550 you're gonna all of a sudden see tens of thousands of contracts go into the money and that would be a very bullish event for amc tomorrow on top of that a tailwind factor that i have been bringing to your guys's attention every single day is the ftd numbers and today you've seen about 4 million ftds that did need to be uh closed out tomorrow you got about 6.8 million ftds that will need to be closed out and the story does not end there because next week starting monday you got 7.3 million ftds tuesday almost 12 million wednesday almost 10 million thursday 11 million and on friday another 10 million in FTD. So specifically tomorrow, it's going to be a very big week. The following week after that, the last week of March, you're going to start off Monday, 10 million FTDs, and then go down to 1 million by Friday. Overall, you're going to see a lot of buying that has to take place due to these FTDs. Believe it or not, AMC is now off the threshold securities list as long as these FTDs are bought back pronto. So uh, pretty interesting right there. Now, the biggest story I would say of the day is the cost of bar rates. I talked about this in the last video, but I think it's important to stress it again. And we have some new updated numbers that are also very exciting. So essentially what I said in the last video is that after major events such as this vote that we got yesterday when the volatility really goes away or should in theory go away you should see the cost of our rates spike into the volatility event and then crater after like implied premium if you've ever played uh you know options on a stock that has earnings <laughs> Those options usually on the calls and call and put side can go up in value heading into earnings because there's a lot of implied volatility, right? There's an implied move from the market makers that the stock's going to move XYZ percentage amount. Well, after earnings, let's say that stock does nothing. It goes up a lot. It comes down a lot. It ends flat in after hours. You're going to wake up the next day. The calls and the puts going to be whacked, going to be destroyed. The premiums are going to be a lot cheaper then right? And if you held those options, you would have lost money. Well, same kind of thing should happen with the cost to borrow rates on major events, uh, you know, such as what we seen yesterday. Actually, the opposite happened. Uh, premiums really didn't move too much. Cost to borrow rates really didn't move too much heading into the event. After the event, that's when they're spiking. So I think this shows a lot and this is the big thing i want everyone to take away from this video if you get one thing and one thing only out of this video is that cost to bar rates are rising it's going to show volatility is here to stay and do expect big moves like if we do get a 20 percent up move tomorrow i wouldn't be surprised to see a 10 percent down move coming on on monday or on fed jerome powell day on wednesday so expect a lot of volatility from here on out as far as the actual numbers you got about 24 and a half percent short interest of free float 126 million shares that are currently sold short cost bar average of 310 percent cost bar max 359 percent cost bar minimum of about one percent and then you have interactive broker short availability uh, you got zero shares available as of right now. Cost bar rate, the last one we got was 171.5%. Take a look at this. Yesterday's numbers that we were seeing was about 100%, 105% in between that area. So you're up almost 100% from the interactive brokers, the live uh, cost to borrow numbers from them. So I do think this shows you a lot about what is going to be happening next with AMC. It's going to show a lot of volatility to come. Uh, as, as, as far as tomorrow, obviously you want to see if this banking crisis accelerates what happens in Europe overnight tonight, because as you guys do know, it's nighttime over there. So by the time it gets to early morning hours, we're going to start to get more updates and that will be crucial. Overall, markets look pretty dang bullish here today. Tomorrow, Michigan consumer sentiment, 
specifically the inflation expectations will likely drive the markets throughout the rest of the day uh tomorrow and that's going to be the big key you also do have fedex earnings in after hours which will be very important to uh essentially the economy right if if fedex does not do well and they do not give good guidance that's going to show people aren't spending as much money that's going to show maybe we're heading into a recession a lot faster than we thought we were so you definitely want to watch fedex here and after hours it will move the broad indexes markets ripping into the close almost back to that 400 level on the spy up almost two percent on the s p 500 up over two percent on the nasdaq so a pretty bullish day overall as far as amc stock we were above four dollars fifty cents per share at one point today for a majority of the day you are now under that sitting at four dollars 39 cents per share so watch after hours to see if we can break back above four dollars 50 cents per share that's the level i want to see us hold at if not we might chop around here for a little while if for whatever reason we don't get this mega balance coming tomorrow i would expect a lot of chop back and forth i don't expect this sell-off to continue at this point just because we have seen such a sell-off over the past uh you know two or three weeks here that I think given the uncertainty around the court date, you need to see a relief rally uh, from here, at least one of them. And ultimately, I do think that is coming. $4.50 is going to be the main level. After that, you want to get back to about $6 per share. I'm not going to forecast that for tomorrow, but I do think over the next couple of weeks, that is very much in the cards guys so that is going to do it for this video if you learned anything if you like this information if you like amc if you like to make money and grow your net worth in the stock market hit that like button subscribe to the channel source your comments questions or concerns down below in the comment section thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next one